Good afternoon on this, the 16th Sunday after Trinity, but we're keeping today as our patronal festival, the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels. The feast day itself is the 29th of September, so it actually falls on Tuesday, uh, but we're keeping it here on Sunday so that we can celebrate it together as a church. So as we begin, we have our first hymn. Ye holy angels bright, who wait at God's right hand. Our New Testament reading this morning was taken from the book of the Revelation, chapter 12, and here it is. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not cling to life even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short.
One of my favourite places in Rome is the Castle San Angelo. I always love to see it. It sits beside the River Tiber, a five minute walk from St Peter's Square. And over the centuries it has been used in many different ways. Originally it was built as the mausoleum for the Emperor Hadrian. But since then it's been used as a papal palace, a stronghold in which the Pope could hide from some of the armies who invaded Rome over the years. It's been used as a prison and as a hospital. Towards the end of the 6th century, there was a plague in Rome, there often was, and Pope Gregory the Great gave a decree that processions should be led from the seven hills of Rome in prayer, interceding for the city. And as this event took place, he saw the vision of the Archangel Michael alighting on top of the castle and sheathing his sword, a sign that the plague was now ended. And in honour of this, he renamed the monument the Castle San Angelo, the name by which it is known today. On top of the castle, there now stands a huge statue of Michael sheathing his sword. A very different figure of the angels we often picture in our mind's eye. A few years ago, when I was in holiday in Rome, we visited the Castle San Angelo again and went up to the very top next to the statue. And as we looked behind the statue, we could see dark thunderclouds sweeping across the sky towards us with flashes of light and the rumbles of thunder. And so it was that the storm drew near and the rain hammered down around us and on us until we too had to flee where all the other tourists had gone. But by then, we were soaking wet, but I have to say we loved every moment of it. And the Castle San Angelo still stands today, that statue of Michael as a beacon on the top. And the various functions that the castle has had over the years, a prison, a hospital, a fortress, a palace, are all attributes of Michael. Michael, who is the leader of the heavenly armies, Michael, who has been used as a healer or prayed to for healing. Michael, the guardian of souls, the one who weighs souls in the balance and makes judgment. The Castle San Angelo, a place where St. Michael was seen in a vision a very different angel and one whom we honour today. So what then can we learn from Michael the Archangel and what can we learn of and by the angels themselves? So what are we to learn about angels? What help is that to you and to me today? and certainly in this current time of pandemic. Every Sunday in our creed we say we believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. And in that sentence we're saying that we believe that God created everything that there is, the things we see and the things that we don't see. And the angels are part of that spiritual creation that we do not see and yet surrounds us part of creation that we only glimpse in visions and in dreams. And angels appear in Holy Scripture throughout the centuries, and there are lots of other traditions and legends about them. There are the three angels who visit Abraham on the way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. There is a legend of, the, of an angel contending with Satan for the body of Moses when Moses dies. There's the angel, of course, guarding the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve are driven out into the world. Angels are mentioned too in the New Testament, 
when Peter escapes from the prison. It is an angel who leads him out. And Peter thinks it's just a dream until the angel leaves him and he comes to his senses. And even then, when he gets to the house where other Christians are meeting, the maid who answers the knock on the door leaves him in the street thinking it's his angel. Jesus speaks of angels. He speaks of guardian angels for children. And woe betide anyone who harms one of these little ones. And of course in the book of the Revelation we hear of Michael and the angels fighting with the war in heaven. Angels then are not the cuddly little cherubs we see on Christmas cards and greetings cards. Instead they are very much a serious part of God's creation and a whole range of different spiritual beings. Angels, archangels, dominions, thrones, principalities, powers, cherubim and seraphim, each with their own function and their own purpose, each one doing the will of God. Angels are the messengers of God. In our Old Testament reading this morning, we heard of uh, Jacob having fled his brother Esau following their father Isaac's death. And there he is with absolutely nothing and he falls asleep and has a dream of the ladder reaching from heaven to earth and the angels of God ascending and descending upon it. And he names that place Bethel. We hear of angels in our gospel reading. When Nathaniel meets Jesus and Jesus says that he'd seen him before he even knew him, sitting under the fig tree. And when Nathanael proclaims, you are the son of God, you are the king of Israel, he says, you will see greater things than this. You will see angels ascending and descending upon the son of man. Michael himself is mentioned several times, uh, three times I think it is in the book of Daniel. And again he's mentioned in the New Testament in the letter of Jude, right at the end of our uh, Bible. And St. Michael has had various ascriptions given to him. Captain of the armies of the heavenly host. In the book of Daniel we are told that it is only P Michael contending against the other powers to protect God's people. Michael has the uh, uh, calling to be a protector of God's people, a healer. He weighs the souls of the righteous and the unrighteous in the, in the balances. Hence the picture on our church wall of Michael with his sword and with his scales. Michael guides and protects God's people. Michael is the saint, uh, the angel, who contends for God's people. And our church, of course, is named after him. What then can we as a church learn from Michael in the current time of pandemic? And I think for me the main thing that I take from our celebrations today is that we're not alone. We're part of a much bigger picture. As we hear the news every day, the doom and the gloom of restrictions and lockdowns, it's very easy for us to lose sight of the bigger picture. And just as St. Gregory saw the vision of the archangel sheathing his sword on the top of Castle San Angelo, marking the end of the plague, so too we today pray for that day when COVID-19 ceases, when we can go back to normal lives again without fear. We look forward to the day when everything returns to normal once more, if normal can ever be achieved because the world will have changed and the way we work, the way we shop certainly has changed during these last few months. But the ability to meet together, to socialise together, to sing hymns in church, to gather together in vast numbers, we pray for those days to return again. Until that day comes, we must keep in mind that bigger picture that that day will come. And we pray to the God that we believe protects us and guides us. We do not always see the bigger picture, but it is there. And God is keeping us safe, guiding us through. Don't forget, 
in uh, various other parts of scriptures, God never promises to take us out of the storm. But it's in the centre of the storm that Jesus is to be found. In the midst of the winds and the waves, Jesus reaches out, do not be afraid, it is I. And Jacob, in his desolation, having lost everything he had, and now on his own, in the middle of nowhere, finds that God is still with him and God promises to stay with him and God will make of him a great nation. Eventually, on his return back to be reconciled with his brother, Jacob will be renamed by God and the name he will be given is Israel. His twelve sons will become the leaders of the twelve tribes of Israel. But in the darkest night, Jacob alone and frightened, the angels of God ascend and descend in his presence. And later on he will wrestle with God, and God will rename him, as I've said, Israel, he who contends with God and prevails. The angels are there to bring God's message of love and hope. We're told that many have entertained angels and not even known it. They don't have wings. They often look like you and I. They do induce usually a sense of fear, of trembling, of awe, a sense of holiness. Angels teach us that there is a war going on around us, the war against Covid, the war against injustice, intolerance, a war to protect our environment, our planet, a war for justice and peace, but also that unseen war, a spiritual war, in which we too are part, and the angels of God are there to contend for us and with us, as together we fight for justice and right, for truth and holiness. We are part of a much bigger picture, but we are never alone. We may not see those who surround us with their love, but they are there to guide us home, to keep us safe and to encourage and to pray. Amen.
and so we come to God in a time of prayer. Father in heaven, by his blood, your Christ has ransomed us to you and has made us a kingdom and priests to serve you, our God. As the angels minister to you in heaven, strengthen your church to serve you here on earth. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, when the angels greeted the birth of your Son, they sang for joy, glory to God, and peace on earth. Bless with Christ's peace the nations of the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, your Son has promised to your children the care of the guardian angels who look upon your face. Protect by your mercy our neighbours, families and friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, you give your angels charge over those who trust in you to guard them in all their ways. Be with those in trouble. Rescue them and show them your salvation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, your angel declares, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, for they may rest from their labours for they take with them the record of their deeds. Enfold in your love all who come in faith to your judgment seat in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father in heaven, the angels sing by day and night around your throne, holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. With Michael, Prince of the Angels, who contends by our side. With Gabriel, your herald, who brings glad tidings. With Raphael, the protector, who ministers your healing. And with the whole company of heaven, we worship you. We give you glory. We sing your praise and exalt you forever. Amen. And our next hymn, Be Thou My Guardian and My Guide.
And so our final blessing. May God keep us in the fellowship of his saints. Christ protect us by the ministry of the angels. The Spirit make us holy in God's service. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank uh-huh.